Hello and welcome to Al's Top 5, the show that brings you the best in popular gaming and film. Coming up, we take a sneak peek at some of my favourites. Starting at number 5, my first pick of the day is an adventure game from LucasArts called Grim Fandango. The story of a land between life and death, where people are in a constant limbo, unable to reach heaven or hell. Sound familiar? The player plays the role of Manny, a poorly paid worker of the dead, dressed as the Grim Reaper. Manny is a simple salesman for the dead, who tries to offer the best deal possible for a ticket on the number 9, a train which takes you to heaven or hell. The class of ticket you would receive depends on how nice you were when you were alive. If all things go well, you're getting a first class ticket. If things aren't so great, well, you can bet you're going for a hot ride to hell. Second up, at, at number 4, is a film from 1977. You might just have heard of it, and if not, what planet have you been on? The film was called Star Wars, a film completely from the mind of film producer and director George Lucas. Apart from those furry creatures from that one episode, we are no match for the sand people. Star Wars continues to appear on our screens in a multiple of formats, much to the disagreement of fans. Word has it that Mr Lucas is re-releasing the series in 3D and Blu-ray. It's time again to get your lightsabers and Leia trims. There's no denying Star Wars has changed their lives, especially for the cool kids. Next, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the theatre, the 1978 sequel to Jaws, titled creatively Jaws 2, is a pretty decent effort at following up Steven Spielberg's classic. But do we really need that girl with the overbearing disease of the scream? You have been warned. The next on the list is a classic video game called Myth, a fantasy RPG which featured on the Mac and PC in the late 1990s. The game allowed the player to take part in a number of battles in a Lord of the Rings style world against an evil group of sorcerers called the Fallen Lords. These included a deranged man who possesses the ability to turn anyone to the dark side. The game's 50 solo levels are highly enjoyable, and having conjured up your first bottle cocktail explosive with your dwarf, there's no denying that you'll be back for more. Let's take a look now at a clip from the game. Prior to the release of Myth by about a year, another range of classic games from the 1990s included the Broken Sword adventure series, featuring the journey of American tourist George Stobart and photojournalist Nico Collat. George visits Paris, but his vacation is stopped short when the Café de la Verte is blown up and a man is murdered by a mysterious killer dressed as a clown. The story unfolds as George tries to track down the killer through a series of investigations. All things go well until a trip to Ireland results in a second and third murder, where the killer is dressed as a mime and pixie nonetheless. The story goes on to reveal the true reason behind the killings to be associated with the Knights Templars, a corrupt group intent on taking over the world. It features a very well written script with quick and snappy dialogue, which is a credit to the makers. In 2009, the game was re-released with new enhancements and graphics. The game makers even produced a soundtrack album of the game, bringing in new fans for the series. That concludes my top five. Remember you can find out about these releases through our website on www.bestgamesforyou.com and you can send us your messages via Facebook or our Twitter page at Best Games For You. So until next time, I'm Alan Taylor and you have been watching Al's Top 5.